Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Dr. Jimbo Love Show featuring my main man right here, Seth Matthew. Hey, everybody. We want to wish you an Olympic and Super Bowl weekend. Look at Seth. He has a tie on for the first time since I've ever met him. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, very good. And we've got the Betsy Ross flag flying behind us. And uh, again, I'm sporting a Olympic USA, Team USA hockey jersey. From what year would this one be? Do you know? I'm not sure on the year of yours ones, but I mean, it's they haven't old. changed much over the years. So, yep, yep. And uh, anyways, so we had a lot of stuff happen last night in college hockey. Um, let's talk a little bit about, uh, we'll start off with Cornell just because they're so far away. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Cornell is really struggling. struggling. Before they came into this game, they had not won in the last five contests that they participated in. Doesn't mean they lost, it just means that they had some ties in there. They're not getting it done. Um, they are now already eliminated from the Ivy League championship. Uh, looks like it's gonna come down to you know Princeton. Um, and we don't know yet, but we can tell you this, that they don't have enough games left to be able to win the Ivy. So what they're playing for now is just for an opportunity to go and be in that top 16 teams that make it to the Frozen Four. Mm -hmm. Currently, before last night's loss, they were sitting at number 16 ranked in the nation. So they are what we call a bubble team. And there would, nothing would make me happier than for Cornell to somehow make it to the Frozen Four and be out here in Loveland playing here in Colorado for the Frozen Four. Yeah, I think uh, the big thing here is, is 16 is a very dangerous play, place to be because what you do have to factor in is the at uh, the conference winners. So like, it doesn't matter if you win the regular season, you still have your conference tournament. And if a team upsets, and I'll say a St. Cloud State ends up winning the NCHC, all of a sudden they get an automatic bid and maybe they weren't gonna make the bubble. So that's gonna push teams down and kick some of the borderline teams out. I agree. Uh, um, what kind of selection committee is involved with picking those 16 teams? Is there some kind of cr criteria? I know there's 10 at-large bids, correct? And then six teams automatic? Yeah, six in? teams automatic, and okay. those are your conference champions. Um, I'm not sure who it's made up from, but I know in the past, St. Cloud State has gotten screwed where they've been on the bubble. And things happen right at the end of the year that might shift you just out of contention to going. Now, St. Cloud State now has a better reputation, and reputation, I do think, plays a little bit of a factor of if you've been there before, they'll look at the quality of your team, the quality of your wins, quality of your losses, because, I mean, if you lose to the number one team, not a big deal, but if you lose to a, basically the 40th ranked team in the country, uh, that's not gonna look good on your resume. And it's points too, right? Mm -hmm. There's certain points, like you, 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 you know, a win is a point, of course, but... A uh, win's, a, win's like two points. A win's two and, points? And okay. A, a tie or overtime loss would go to one point. Okay. So you're not, you know, these ties that Cornell had aren't, aren't going to completely kill them. They're not blanking out as far as points Depends go. who they were, though. Like, if you lost, okay. uh, I don't know, let's just go with Miami, Ohio this year that's having a real tough season, right. and you ended up tying them. It doesn't look good on your resume. Now, if it turns into a North Dakota St. Cloud State, it plays a much different weight on the quality of time. Gotcha, gotcha. And the selection committee, do they meet a week before the first round of the Frozen Four to determine it, like on a Monday or is it a Sunday? Because I know, you know, the, the NCAA basketball, they have a selection committee. Yeah, so they have a selection thing just like the NCAA where the teams will be watching, especially the ones that didn't get automatic bids. Uh, and they do an announcement and they place you in your bracket. Now it's broken up into four sides. It's one through four on each side. Okay. Uh, and if you come out of your bracket, single elimination. So yep. anything can happen. A hot goalie can really change the uh, thing. Kind of what happened last night to Cornell when they were playing RPI. Oh, yeah. They came out. They dominated gameplay. They were up two to yep. one after the first. They ended up losing six to two, but they outshot the other team 41 to 19. And so, I mean, when it comes down to that, I mean, hot goalies can really change the dynamic of the way the game goes. And that's incredible because, uh, Seth, you couldn't have done it better um, as far as, uh, you know, parlaying into that. So, yes, uh, 
we have Cornell that came out really strong. They had 13 shots on goal in the first period. RPI only had five. Uh, Cornell scores two goals, so at the end of the first period, it's two to one. Then Cornell, we, I'm not sure what happened, but they only had seven shots in the second period on goal where RPI was at nine. So RPI doubled their shots and Cornell um, basically have theirs. Um, it looks like they got some fire in the third period. They had 21 shots on goal and RPI ended up with five and a total of 19 shots for RPI. Mm -hmm. So just like Seth said last week, and you know, goalies are fallible. And the more shots you have on goal, the more chance you you have to get a rebound goal, mm -hmm. um, or to you know to beat the goalie. And and it's hard to be tough. And and RPI's goalie stopped 39 so shots. 39. Yeah, that's and, pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean you, you see it in uh, especially in, in any hockey. I mean uh, people probably remember early in the early 2000s, uh, John Jabas and Jaguar for Anaheim. Uh, I didn't think the Ducks were that impressive going into playoffs, but he ended up getting, uh, I believe, four shutouts in a row. He stopped over 200-some shots in a row, never gave up a goal. His team was outplayed all series, but his team ended up getting the sweep. So, I mean, a goalie can change the outcome of a whole entire series just based on if they get hot at the right time. That's what we always talk about. If you're hot in the regular season, it doesn't mean anything in playoffs if you start giving up goals. No, you're right. And it's like that in any kind of uh, tournament competition. You see it in the NCAA tournament as well. Mm -hmm. Some of these play-in guys have made it all the way to the final eight. Uh, I believe one of them actually ended up making it to the final four. Uh, that was last year or the year before. And these play-in people are the 64 plus. So you have 64 teams and then they pick four teams to be play-in teams. Mm -hmm. So when, if, you, if you're a play-in team and you can make it all the way to the final eight or the final four, that's pretty huge. Oh. Um, and obviously somebody got hot. Yeah. So, well, let's talk, uh, let's move in and we'll talk a little bit about what happened with DU. I, we couldn't be prouder of DU right now. They came into the series this weekend against Minnesota Duluth, ranked second in the nation, and they pulled out another big victory down at uh, Magnus Arena. And uh, it was a, a six or a five to three victory. Yeah, and it, it overall was a uh, pretty even split of a game. Obviously, Denver is known for controlling the puck and dominating on the shot total. Denver only had 32 shots, and I say only 32 because in the past couple of weeks, probably in the last six weeks, they're averaging between 45 and 50 shots. So Duluth really held in there, and Duluth scored every single period. They got one each period. There was a little letdown in the second where Denver ended up pulling away a little bit, scoring three goals in the second, and that yes, just sir. that happened to be the difference maker. Uh, they play again tonight, and you know what? Like the way Duluth handled themselves, I think it's going to be another close game, uh, back and forth. Uh, Hopefully Denver can keep their home record basically unblemished this year because yeah. right now they're right on track for it. Well, Minnesota Duluth is no slouch of their own. They're ranked seventh coming mm -hmm. into this weekend in the nation. So we have a two versus seven. Last week we had a three versus five or three versus, what was St. Cloud? I think at the time we were six or seven at this Yeah, point. exactly. Um, so the way the shots went or the, uh, the actual goals went, uh, DU came out um, and uh, Duluth both were 1-1 one -one after the first period. Uh, as Seth said, uh, DU poured it on in the second period, scoring three goals. So they were up four to two at the end of the second. And then they both added one goal towards the end. And I believe one of them was an empty netter mm -hmm. with about 106 left. So it was 4-3 for the majority of the third period. And DU was able to pull it out five to three. Carter King scored a goal. Cole Gutman, uh, Mike Benning and McCade Webster. And the reason why I mention these guys is because these guys didn't score at all last week mm -hmm. against St. Cloud State. So we know that there's a youth movement at uh, DU. Uh, DU has got Carter Savoy, who's a sophomore. Um, Carter Savoy only had three shots on goal last night. So, you know, it's nice to see that with these great uh, lines that DU has, that they've got guys that actually can score that may not be your your marquee players. They're the, the second, third, and fourth line. Well, and that's going to be a big uh, key for them when it comes tournament time, because obviously one loss eliminates you. But uh, the big thing is, is your top line can't do it every single night. Uh, right. We see we've seen that with the Abs in the past. Uh, the Abs have always been uh, through their struggles. Not now they're not struggling. Number one team in the NHL. 
But at one point, we had probably one of the top lines in the NHL. We just didn't have any depth. That has changed now with Joe Sackick making some amazing trades uh, and getting that depth to actually make them a Stanley Cup team. Denver looks like they have all the tools. Uh, they're just going to need a couple of puck bounces because there's going to be some close games ahead. Yeah. Uh, but they have the depth to make their run at the national championship. Well, and they have the goalie, too. Mm -hmm. They really do. Their goalie is tough. Um, there's another goalie that we, we can't, we have to mention the guy who had 39 saves uh, for RPI, and that's Jack Watson. Jack Watson is also up for the Richter Award. So, you know, with Corona, um, our DU goalie, it'll be interesting to see, you know, which one of these guys, and there may be some other ones that are, are having outstanding seasons, but it'll be interesting to see who gets that Richter Award, which is the most outstanding goalie in college hockey. Which I think there is a one-up for DU in this, uh, or for Denver in this um, matchup, just because they are going to be the higher ranked team at the end of the year. Uh, they're con they're conference is a little bit stronger than RPIs and they play tougher games. DU, if you actually look at all of their I agree. matchups, it's always a top 10 team coming for the most part. I mean, Colorado College, you're not up there. Right. Uh, Miami, Ohio. <clears throat> Omaha, Nebraska at one point was sitting at that 20 spot for a little bit. But you have Western Michigan, North Dakota, St. Cloud State, and Duluth. And when you have all these top 10 teams in your division, it seems a little bit easier to give the award to the goalie for that team. Sure, and just like Seth had said uh, in our preview show and talking about last week's matchups, uh, you're, this this uh, league out here, okay, it's what, the NCHC? Yep. Is by far, I think, doing a lot of research, the toughest league in the nation. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's gonna be great to see how it matches up because my prediction, if St. Cloud State can somehow make it in, is we're looking at four or five of these 16 teams being from the NCHC. So it's really going to be uh, interesting to see because the Big Ten is probably going to get the University of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what Mankato's league is called, but Mankato will make it. Uh, they're another Minnesota team. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're probably looking at, of these teams, which I thought was funny, um, last year when St. Cloud State went to the championship, mm -hmm. three out of the four teams from Minnesota. No kidding. Well, you know, as we were saying, Minnesota is a hockey crazy state. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's kind of mm -hmm. nice that, you know, with with Seth being here and being a, Min uh, a Minnesota native, um, we get a chance to cover some hockey. This is like really in your wheelhouse, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> well, let's talk about real quick the rankings, okay? Uh, again, another Minnesota State, or Minnesota State, another Minnesota team is ranked number one in the nation. They're 27-5-0. Our hometown uh, Denver U DU is number two at 21 wins, five losses, and one tie. Um, we also have Michigan at number three, 21, seven, and one. Western Michigan at four. Quinnipiac at five, 23, two, and three. Not, you know, they were number one mm -hmm. for a good, a good portion of the season. Number six, oh, I was wrong. Minnesota Duluth is sixth, not seventh. They're at 14, 10, and two. UMass 15, 8, and 2 is number 7. And then you've got University of Minnesota, the Golden Gophers at 8, Ohio State Buckeyes at 9, and then St. Cloud State is hanging on 10. by a thread at 10. But, but you guys lost on Tuesday, right? No, we won on Tuesday. Oh, you won on so Tuesday. So we beat okay. Duluth in a shootout on Tuesday, and we ended up playing Western Michigan this week. It was a tough, tough loss, but we had already lost to them twice this year. Western Michigan is kind of a force to reckon with this year. Uh, they Which is, there was four. Yeah, they came out of nowhere. Okay. Uh, and so the big thing is, we scored early. We scored in the two minutes into the game, went up one nothing. Then we went down 3-1. It was a back-and-forth game. We went 5-5 and ended up coming up just short in overtime. Right. So it was a great matchup. Stat-wise, you can't really break down anything because shots were pretty even. Mm -hmm. uh, penalties were pretty even. It was just an even, great matchup. Uh, Where was the game played? So we went to Western Michigan this time because they came to us last and time. And what city is Western Michigan in? Do you know? Is I it, have no idea. Is it Grand Rapids? So they are a team that I have never paid attention to because Michigan State yeah. Michigan have always been forces. Right. This is the first time I've really seen Western Michigan up in this area. So, Interesting. So uh, I was talking to a North Dakota fan the other day, and we both were talking, being like, where did this team come from? Because typically we <laughs> dominate this team. Um, and another big matchup that uh, we'll touch a little bit on is Minnesota did play Ohio State, two top ten matchup. Um, 
Minnesota Gophers came up and won last night, so that should move them up in the rankings. Again, it's quality wins. Big Ten does not have a lot of teams. You've only heard Ohio State and Minnesota up there, so that means with the Penn States and the Michigans and all those in there, it they don't have the quality wins that this NCHC has because right. we have so many top 10 teams in there. Yeah. Now, Western Michigan, just to kind of give you a little, this is, I'm going again off of the memory, but I believe that Thunder Dan Marley, who played in the NBA for the Suns, he also was on the Olympic team um, in 1988. He's a Western Michigan alumni, and I believe they're called the Chippewas. Well, Western I'm Michigan thinking. right now is the Broncos. Oh, is it the Broncos? Okay, yes. so I'm thinking of something else then. Yeah. So, all right. So okay. they have a horse and all that. I, I, I'm a big mascot guy. Okay. Like, I have a Colorado so college. So they're not the Chippewas. Like Who are the Chippewas? I am not sure. Okay. Well, we'll check it. And, and they we'll could have gone. Out. They could have gone through a name change since then. All yeah. Right. Well, what we'll do? Oh, the Chippewas because that's Indian, right? Yeah. So they would probably switch ah. up names most likely because I mean the Sioux switch. So I'm assuming that's right. Most college sports have changed okay. their names by now. Well, we'll check and we'll get you. Uh, we're going to do a little Google check. Um, our producer is is not here yet this morning, but we'll check it and find out and get back to you on, on part two of the show today. Um, other than that, let's go and move into our Olympics. Yeah, and let's, let's kick it right off with hockey. Uh, USA Hockey had a big game last night. Uh, they were playing the favorites, uh, Canada, that's supposed to win the gold medal. And you know, the United States came in, their younger team, average age of 25, and they ended up winning 42. That's awesome. And so, I mean, I bet on Canada because I figured, so Canada's team is a different type of makeup. So what we put in, we put in a couple of AHL players with a significant amount of college players. But Canada took a couple college players and they took a lot of the KHL, which is the Russian Hockey League. They're, more, they're a more veteran team, a more experienced team. They've been in this level before. And you know what? It didn't phase USA at all. I thought there would be a little hiccup with the experience. But you, St. Claude State, or not St. Claude State, USA ended up Pretty much, they were pretty even in gameplay, and for a while, Canada hopped on them early. Yep. USA stuck with it, and eventually they evened out all the stats and came right back, and Canada was on their heels. I don't think they expected us to come in this no. quick. You know who really uh, shocked them was Kenny Argostino. He's a, ninth, uh, a 2013 Yale graduate and won the NCAA tournament, the Frozen Four, in 2013, and this kid, came out and just popped a couple goals in there and you wouldn't expect it because he's not an nhl player i, I don't even know what he's doing right now is he an NHL? i don't think he's an nhl player. i haven't well you can't be an nhl player okay so we know that he's not then because the so, nhl is banned that's why canada looks so different there's no Sidney crosby there's no right nathan mckinnon up there so the, i really like this olympics because it's not your household names and exactly. it, you, you can get behind them and you can start following because average age of 25 means some of these guys are about to go pro like Aaron Ness has been sitting in the AHL yeah. for the last couple of years so you, you can start watching his name see if he comes out you're seeing these other college players that they're still in college like Kale McCarr was two, two, basically two years ago and yep, you're absolutely now right. you get to see them pop up and go to the NHS. So I really like the exposure it is giving our young players. Yeah, and I'm looking for – RPI has one gentleman, their best player. Uh, the team that beat Cornell um, has one of their players playing on the uh, – um, on the Olympic team, and I, 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 I'll have to find it here. It's, it's in my notes. But basically, so RPI was playing without their – what I would assume is their best player, and they still beat Cornell. Um, so yeah, let's just this guy credit this Kenny, and you wait you spell his last name is A G O S T I N O. So I think Augustino, Augustino, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Kenny Augustino played very well, and we want to we want to you know tell him hey, uh, that's great, you're a Yale alumni, you must be a pretty smart guy, and uh, just keep it up. Um, our women's hockey uh, won four to one to advance to the semis over they beat Czechoslovakia. Um, did you have anything on that one at all? And we will check it. So no. So basically, uh, men's hockey is still in round, round robin. USA will play Germany uh, tomorrow. Yep, Sunday. And okay. um, Canada will now go play China. And so we'll move on. So there's a good chance we're going to run into Canada again, mm -hmm. most likely in like a gold medal game, which would be pretty cool. Really, really um, would be great. But the USA women, they've been doing well. Uh, they only have the one loss to Canada. 
Uh, they just got outplayed. And so if they're in the semis, the semis are basically the final eight teams, correct? So that means you ended the round robin. So what, oh, you, so, so, so what okay. you do is... Because uh, the quarterfinals is the final four. The semis... Quarter would be... Eight. Or no, or semis no is final four. Yeah. So, so they're they're playing for a medal next next game, yeah. right? So basically okay. what, what happens is they do these little groups. It's kind of like the World Cup if you guys follow soccer. Right. But you're in a group of four. Uh, and the top two teams from each thing. So there must be four brackets because you come out with eight. Um, and so right now the United States is solidified in men's that we are going to the next stage. Canada, they should walk away and beat China. Uh, so it will be us and Canada leaving out of our bracket. Uh, Germany and China will be eliminated. But there's still a bunch of good teams out there. There's still Sweden, Finland, Russia, all those teams. There could be a matchup with USA versus Russia. We have the college kids again. Little miracle. Hey, I mean, this is starting to remind me of 1980 a little bit. Now, Seth doesn't remember 1980 because he was uh, he wasn't born until 88. But 1980, I mean, the kids just came together and they were young and, and no one saw them coming. And uh, so maybe that's what's happening to in now. We can only hope and pray and see what happens. Well, and the cool thing about USA Hockey, I'll just give one more thing on it, mm -hmm. is without the NHL players, this is just showing the quality of hockey we have in this country. Uh, of our college development, our basically our youth system, and how good it, we're developing our hockey players. Because right Absolutely. now we didn't even send our pros, and we are still dominating at this big stage. Yeah, Ben, you, that's a great thing, and you know it speaks volume to our coaches in here in the United States, our junior programs, and just a lot of uh, kids out there and hockey moms and dads. Didn't you say your parents, I mean, back when you had all your equipment, you left it in the living room yeah, one time and the whole house smells. smelled up? So there's a lot of sacrifices that parents, American parents, are making out there, and we want to tell you, just keep doing it. Yeah, because it's expensive. The stick is like 250 bucks, and what? I broke three of them in the game. Wow. So it is an expensive sport, but it is a fun sport. Absolutely. Great. Well, let's talk about some of the other things that are going on. We have Chloe Kim, who picked up a second gold medal. Uh, Michaela Schifrin. She was able to make it down the mountain, uh, finishing ninth in a Super G. Sean White did not medal, but heck, you know what? He gave us a really heartfelt goodbye, and it was a nice way for him to exit the sport. Uh, Baumgartner and Jacobellis won a gold medal in the mixed teams. Uh, snowboard Cross is what it's called. Baumgartner is 40 years old. He's never won a medal before, so he got himself a gold. And Jacobellis is just absolutely fantastic. I, I think she's, and she is, she's won the gold. Um, she is the best women's snowboarder in the world. And she really, really played. And you know, she's 36 years old, so she's no spring chicken. Chances are this is the last Olympics for both of these people, and they went out with gold. Um, gold also, too, we, we made it in the uh, mixed team aerials. So the mixed team aerials, um, which is a ski jump, you know, it's when they come down without their poles and they go up and they do flip and flip and flip, flip, flip. They won a gold medal as well. Um, one of the things we want to mention too, we'd be remiss, is the quad king, Nathan Chen. He yep. did five quads, okay? And that's a an incredible jump. It's very dangerous. And he was able to win men's single gold, which makes him the best male figure skater in the world. Yeah, even with these couple wins though, we are definitely sitting way behind on the medal tracker. We're hoping to get some from USA Women's uh, Hockey, a little bit from US, uh, uh, US Men's Hockey as well. But Norway is commanding this Olympics right now, uh, sitting at number one. And right now you have US sitting in seventh in the total medals. Okay, so my medal count's a little off. Or maybe mine is. Well, you have us in third now. Well, here's what ha here's as of now. Remember, this is in the internet, so we haven't counted today's competition on this medal count. So basically, remember, the, there's a there, there's a true medal count, which means that you know last night was today in China, so they've already competed. So this medal count is going to be as of the end of yesterday. Okay. So we've got number one Germany with eight golds, five silvers, one bronze for a total of 14. Norway, eight golds, three silvers, six bronze for a total of 17. Now just a little spoiler alert, Norway is now at 21. 
okay? So they won a couple more uh, medals. We don't know how many, but or we don't know which the, if it's gold, silver, or bronze, but we know that they won at least four today. So they're actually at 21. The United States was third. We are five golds, five silvers, one bronze for a total of 11. Now, remember, didn't we talk about the over under for number of golds? Yeah, it was supposed to be 10 and a half. Okay, so we are now and sitting in a good place. So if you bet the over for golds, you guys are pretty happy out there. Um, and remember, we've got big things going on. We're going to talk about the Super Bowl in our next segment, but DraftKings and some of these other places have some incredible deals going on. Don't be afraid to look at it. I know that Seth convinced me in our point-counterpoint two weeks ago. I'm setting up DraftKings as soon as we get off the, uh, the air today, and I'm betting a little bit of money because if you bet $5, you get $280. Um, yeah. So if you bet 10 that's going to double it, right? It'll double it from 280 to... No, because it's a promo. Oh, it's just a promo. So so you bet five, that the, the, okay. it's a set number that they're going to give you. So okay. basically, they're giving you X amount of free money. Gotcha. And then they expect you to, you know, probably bet a little. Bit. Okay. Number four is Netherlands. Five golds, four silvers, two bronze for 11. Sweden, five, two, and three. Austria, four golds, six silvers, and four bronze for 14 total medals. Go, way to go, Austria. You know, that's that's my uh, heritage. I'm, both sides of my family are Austrian. Number seven, China, four, three, and one for eight total. Russia, three, four, and six, which is 13 total medals. Uh, we've got Italy. Hey, way to go, Italy. I like your food. Two, five, four for 11, and then Japan is number 10 at two, three, Five for 10 total medals. And this will change a little bit. I mean, yeah. USA right now, the women's curling team, uh, just lost their first match in the round robin stage, but they're still sitting in second place in there, and they are favored to medal there. Uh, with the men's hockey, it looks like we should medal out of this tournament. And women's hockey, we always at least medal. So we're looking at getting three more for sure, uh, and we'll just see what they end up, gold, silver, or bronze. So, I mean, USA can make up a couple, a uh, little bit of ground here. I'm not sure how many other events we have left. We have a lot left because well, it's the, the, the end of the the end of the Olympics is on the 20th. Today is the 12th. So we have eight more days, or at least seven more days of competition. Well, I'm just not sure where we are in the stage of like, are we qualified for the medal round, or are they in round oh, yeah, robin? I'm not sure either. How, yeah, how much work we have to do to get in those? Because right, I know, right, right. Uh, what's her name? Good. Shift. Um, Michaela Schifrin. She's got two events. Two left. events, and those haven't started yet, so there's a yep. possibility there. But you know, every time you do a event in the Olympics, it's not just going to the medal right away. There's a eliminate, prelims. Yeah, a prelim prelims, yep. that eliminates it down to anywhere from 10 to 20, and then after that, it goes down to your final three. So we'll, hopefully, we'll have some Americans in there, and we'll move up that medal tracker. Did you watch the biathlon at all last night? They were showing it on uh, on NBC. I didn't watch it last night. I watched the women at the beginning when I watched Norway ended up. Taking. It was the women's biathlon, and these women can shoot. Oh, and they're fast. Oh, they're fast. And you know, one thing that really kind of grabbed me was that in the biathlon, as soon as they come across the finish line, they all fall down and lay there like they're about ready to die. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and my sister-in-law was saying to me, well, they do it in track and field. I'm like, not every single person yeah. that comes across the line falls down. Matter of fact, they're told not to do that. Uh, technically speaking, you're supposed to continue to run because you don't want your heart to just all of a sudden, you know, be you, you're totally sedentary at, at the end. I mean, if you watch marathon runners, if you watch milers, what do they do? They, they continue to run because they want a cool down phase. And it's kind of interesting. I don't understand why the biathletes do that. We'll see if we can check and find out. I don't, I don't know any biathletes. Do you happen to know I any biathletes? But we, I guarantee Just from what you. I see on TV. <laughs> we can probably look it up on the internet because that's pretty much the magic idiot box for all of us to figure out the facts. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, well, let's talk about... Um, the Super Bowl, we can talk a little bit about that. That's coming up. Um, how are we doing time-wise? Do we have any idea what time we've got Yeah, we're here? sitting at about like almost 30 minutes. What's that say right there? 29.32. Okay. So we've got at least another 12 minutes. So let's talk about the Super Bowl. You, you think we can do that? Oh, yeah. We could easily knock that out. Okay. 
All right, so you remember uh, the Super Bowl this weekend, and we're going to do a point counterpoint. Let me let's just tease that a little bit. Okay. We're going to talk about the fact that StubHub has reported that the Bengals have the least amount of StubHub sales of any team uh, in recent memory for the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Again, we're going to get in more into that as as we go forward. And there's some uh, we have some theories. Uh, Sess has a theory. I have a theory. And it should be interesting because it's not going to be really so much of an argument today as, as more of a discussion. Mm -hmm. um, Cincinnati, what do you think? Do you think they have a chance? They got a chance, but it all goes on their matchups. I mean, we're looking at experience here. Sean McVay, 55 and 26 as a head coach. Zach Taylor on the flip side, 16 and 32 and 1. So wow. nothing that impressive there. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how you can win. And if you actually look at that, most of those wins came this year. Oh, yeah. So, they are the hot team. They are kind of the underdog favorite. Well, they built their team for this particular game, mm -hmm. right? They, they haven't had a first-round draft pick since 2016. Folks, this is a new way of building a team. So, we may see a new model out there of not going through the draft, but going through free agency. Yeah, but like the real quick matchup is Aaron Donald versus uh, the right guards of Hackinson. Uh, Carmen and Hakeem Adenji. And those are uh, the right guards for Cincinnati. Okay, interesting. They, if you can't stop Aaron Donaldson, Joe Burrow's going to be on his back all day. These it, are the defensive, this is the defensive front line for the Rams. No, Aaron Donaldson is on the defense that's going to be attacking Joe Burrow. So those were yeah. the Cincinnati players. So, that so, are, yeah, so it's yeah, a defensive line. line for the Rams. They're up. Aaron Donaldson's the only one that's on the Oh, he is. Defense. These other guys are... Uh, uh, they're on the offensive line for Cincinnati oh, that okay. are going to try to stop See, it. and that just shows you, again, I'm guilty of this, is that sometimes in, in pro football, we only know the people that are in the uh, the marquee positions. Mm -hmm. So can you say that one more time? Because I kind of cut you off. Oh, so it's going to be Aaron Donaldson, or Aaron Donald, uh, for the Rams. He's going to get to Joe Burrow over and over again, unless... Hackinson, Carmen, and Hakeem Adenji can actually stop him. Now, everyone's getting to Joe Burrow this year. Sacked exactly. 55 times in regular season. It just can't happen this Super Bowl. You also have Von Miller back there that's going to try to break through. Uh, on top of that, for the offensive side for the Rams, will uh, Cooper Cup be stopped by Mike Hilton? I don't think he's going to be. Uh, I think Cooper Cup's going to run wild on this team. Um, and how about Beckham? What do you think? Remember, Beckham is the number two receiver. So they, if they're going to double up on Cooper, they then, can't. They have to single cover Odell Beckham. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that one's going to be a, a good matchup. Odell hasn't really done anything for the Rams since getting there. Yeah. But this could be the game. I well, mean, yeah, they, the lights are on him, and he's supposed to be Mr. Showtime, right? Yeah, you look at uh, last year's game with uh, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Gronk didn't do anything for most of the season. Right. Super Bowl came, touchdown, touchdown. Yep. Just he went yep. off. Yep. Um, Another key matchup for this one is going to be, can the Rams actually run the ball? Because they're 25th in the NFL. They're not good at running. Uh, they've had some injuries to Cam Akers, Henderson. Uh, a familiar name out there for people will be Sony Michelle. He used to be on the Patriots. He's been getting more work in. Uh, they really are going to have to balance the attack for the Rams right. to really handle this team. Now, uh, I think Akers, this is my prediction. I think Akers has had two weeks to really rest and rehab. Remember, he's coming off an injury. Yeah. I think you're going to see a big game from Akers. I think you'll see him out of the backfield. I think what's going to happen is you're going to see that Stafford, especially in the beginning of the game, is going to be a little nervous. Okay, Both teams are going to be nervous. Yeah. Okay, This is not familiar territory for either, either team or either quarterback. So my guess is you're going to see some draw plays to Akers. Look for Akers to have a big quor uh, first quarter, I think. And also Joe Mixon. Don't forget about Joe Mixon. I mean, the Bengals running back, Joe Mixon, could end up being a really key factor. Again, out of the backfield, also some, you know, maybe some uh, draw plays and stuff like that just to get some pressure off of uh, um, uh, Joe Burrow. If you're, if you're being sacked a bunch, mm -hmm. I mean, the golden rule is, you know what? Let the people get, come through and do the little dump-off pass over the middle. Well, and Joe Mixon as one of the top uh, rush, rushing at rushing yards average uh, in the game. He averages a, a little over four yards per carry. That's Where on the flip side, the Rams only, I think it's like 2.4. They right. do not run well. Um, but that's because Akers has been hurt. Yeah, true. You know? uh, and, and they've been rotating. I mean, they, they've been using three different running backs, a mixture of each uh, yes. thing due to injury. 
Um, another big thing it's going to come to is Jamar Chase. Can he get free from Jalen Ramsey? Yes. That's the, actually the biggest matchup I want to see. The Rams secondary. Yeah, because Ramsey's probably one of the best in the game. I mean, he's going to be probably a Hall of Famer. He's a, an amazing talent. Versus the young up-and-comer Jamar Chase, we'll see. What, what gets you, seniority or youthfulness at the exactly. end of the day? Um, but, yeah, it's going to be a great game. Um, what I'm most looking forward to as well is going to be Super Bowl is always – it used to be a college football thing. But more and more, we're seeing trick plays in the Super Bowl, Big and time. I just can't wait. I, I'm suspecting it's going to come from the Bengals. They're going to do something really cool with Joe Burrow. I, I just have a feeling, like, whether it's a Statue of Liberty play, a flea flicker, sure. or something crazy. So I'm just really excited for that. But my prediction for this game is Rams 31 and the Bengals 24. Rams? Okay. So you're picking it to be basically a seven-point victory by the Rams. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And um, my, my sentiments exactly, let me give a, a, a point total here. I think the Rams are going to score more than 31 points. I'm going to go with 35 Rams, and I don't think the Bengals, I, I think the Bengals are going to get beat. I'm going to give the Bengals 17 points. So I don't know, what is the over and under? Do you know offhand? I don't know offhand. But here's a, here's a fun fact. How many points did the Rams score in their last Super Bowl appearance, which was just about five years ago? Oh, I don't know. Three. Oh, wow. They lost 13 to three. Right, but they didn't have Matthew Stafford. Not Stafford. true. Yeah, that, yeah, that was Jared, Jared Goff. But still, it is. Uh, you never know with these games. Uh, yeah. We sometimes get the high scoring, and ago. sometimes we get the low scoring Super Bowls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for uh, fans, per, for fan purposes, I hope this is a shootout. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting. Here's here's another thing I want people to understand is Cincinnati made big time adjustments at halftime during the AFC Championship. We've, we've documented that. Now, look in the very first, and, and I think Cincinnati's gonna come out a little bit tighter than they're kind of saying they're gonna be, you know, the old fun and, fun and gun gang or whatever they wanna be. I think they're gonna come out and be a little tight, mainly because nobody knows what the big lights are like in a Super Bowl. So um, I think what you're going to see is some major adjustments by both teams. And both teams are very, very, uh, that's what they're known for, making adjustments at halftime. So this could be a tale of two halves. Yeah, and see, you know? I think we're going to be a little opposite on this one because how I see it, okay. I see the Bengals coming in loose because they have nothing to lose. This team will be here next year. They right. are not losing anybody. The Rams are in salary cap trouble next year. This is a one and done for them. Right. So they're going to have to make huge adjustments in the offseason. So if they don't do it here, they're most not likely going to make it But they're not thinking like that. I, I don't think they're thinking that. I, 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 and, I, and they're home, too. They Remember, are they, home. They're all sleeping in their own beds. That, that makes true. a big difference. And I'm telling you one thing, okay? Cincinnati, okay, they've had two weeks to soak up their big victory in the AFC Championship. The entire city of Cincinnati is going bananas. Did you hear that they named three different state parks after Borough State Park, um, McPherson State Park, and then the Icky Woods State Park <laughs> temporarily? So this, there's something about that two-week break. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, people sometimes take a little break and they start reading their own press. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to sound negative towards Cincinnati, but you know what? Cincinnati's still in the AFC North, and, and they're arch rivals of my Steelers. Again, I have said this, and I'll go on the record again saying this. I, I should be rooting for Cincinnati because I'm an AFC guy, but I'm not, okay? I think that they need a good shot to the mouth. I think they need a reality check, and I think that they need to come into next season realizing that the rest of the AFC North is not going to roll over for them because they had this fantastic year, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that they get punched in the mouth early and often. And I hope the Rams, you know, this would be one Super Bowl where if the Rams win it 45-10, I'm not going to be that upset. Although I'd love to see a good ball game. Remember, 35-17 is my prediction. Seth is 31-24. to yep. Let's see who's closer. And, and we'll also, Seth and I are going to do a little side bet for the over-under. And maybe for the game. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about yeah. it. But uh, uh, Seth, Seth and I have only made two bets in our whole career. And we're even. 
So this will be the this will be the rubber match uh, for best two out of three. Yeah, and there is no football for a while after this, so <laughs> it's going to be an interesting bet because whoever has whoever wins is going to have bragging rights, bragging for, a rights while. for the NFL. Don't worry, I'll get them back in the Frozen Four or something like that. <laughs> we, we're going to be betting some more. Trust me. All right, folks. Well, great. Let's see. We're really close to our 42-minute mark, which is what our goal is. And that's because when you're on the radio, um, you usually do about 42 minutes of content. The rest of it's going to be ads. And that's something you can keep uh, track of even when you're watching your shows on NBC, CBS, ABC, whatever station you watch your shows, you're only getting 42 minutes of content. The best part about us is you get it without any commercials, except for one, which we're going to do right now. Actually, two. I'm you want to lead with yours? Do you want me? Okay, I'm going to lead with my. My company is called Pro Comfort Medical. The cool thing about Pro Comfort Medical is we're new to Colorado, and we are Medicaid and Medicare certified, which means that you do not have to take any money out of your pocket to purchase anything from us. As a matter of fact, the program that we're involved with is a preventative pain maintenance program and a preventative program for your joints, meaning your knees, hips, back and ankles. So what we do is we provide you with a free pair of diabetic and orthotic shoes. Now I'm not supposed to say free but that's what it is. It's really a no cost pair of shoes because you've already paid for your shoes. Every single paycheck, if you guys take it and look at those lines of deductions out of your paycheck, Medicaid and Medicare is taken out for your entire life. Well what our program does is it saves money for the Medicaid and Medicare pool. Instead of having to pay for expensive knee hip, knee replacements, hip replacements, and back surgeries, by supplying somebody with the preventative measures that we do, and, and like I said, they are all covered through a program that Medicare and Medicaid have, have brought about, you will get a no-cost pair of diabetic or ortho orthotic shoes. If you go to the Good Feet store, Eddie McCaffrey used to pitch them so big time, you know that it costs you between four and six hundred dollars for that same pair of shoes. Okay, not with us. So check us out. Um, I'll have a website for us up, but we're doing a seminar at Heather Gardens, okay, which is right in Aurora, right off of Yale, and on 225 is where Heather Gardens is located on Wednesday, 11 p.m. to 1 or 11 a.m. to, to 1 p.m will be right there at the Mountain Vista room. Come on down, we have plenty of room for you, and let us get you a preventative pair of shoes. Let's All talk right. about Brothers. Yeah, so, uh, I'm the general manager of Brothers Bar and Grill. That's where we are doing our live broadcast from. Uh, Brothers Bar and Grill is up at the shops of Norfield. Uh, we play all the sporting events. You come in, I don't care who your favorite team is, you can tell me South Carolina here. Yep. And we'll put it on for you. Yep. Uh, and he does, always. That's what got me hooked. Yeah, and our, our staff always makes you, they treat you like family. Uh, we have the best specials. Cheers. We always have the most fun. And we just have a great fun time here. Uh, we have UFC playing tonight. Uh, no cover. No uh, cover. Adesanya is defending his title, so it's a big name. Uh, we'll get here early, have fun. We have uh, great drink specials, $5 fireballs tonight. Uh, we also have $8 Long Island pitchers. Are we setting up the ring up here? Um, the KY Jelly ring that they had in old school? Are we uh, doing that? We don't quite do that. <laughs> but uh, we, as it gets warmer, uh, you'll drive by our patio. We'll have cornhole out there. We'll have basic yard games that you can have uh, for family and fun. And we are going to start up our events again. So we will be bringing back trivia. Uh, that has always been fun. We did a Lord of the Rings thing one. Uh, we always try to find fun interactive trivia, especially when we're off on the football season right. and there's not as much to watch. We just show the best party here. Now, we're not going to do the uh, the Harry Potter thing with the brooms between our legs, running around and playing. What is that game called? Oh, Quidditch. Yeah. Are we going to do Quidditch again? Because, you know, fantasy games are a big part of the millennial generation. It is, but we, we are not going to be doing Quidditch. But we have done some pretty fun things here. We've done movies before and we set them like up as too. drinking games oh really uh so it, like you could say uh, i like that like talladega nights take a drink every time ricky bobby says i want to go fast yeah. uh you could do it with harry potter every time they say potter or yeah. harry one drink they say harry potter double but you could always we, we always try to create just fun events yep. and you never know what's going on so stop on in come find out what's going on the rapid season isn't too far away 
and we are going to be just throwing a party all year long. Here. Right on. And then we're going to work with uh, with Lyft and uh, Uber to make sure that there's a fleet of cars out here if we do drinking games. Yeah. Okay, because no one drinks and drives when they leave Brothers. Nope. All right. Hey, um, next segment. Point, counterpoint. Interesting. Why aren't Cincinnati fans flocking to the Super Bowl? That's our question. All right, so come on back. Uh, we will be on, and uh, thank you so much for listening to us. Remember, you can find us on YouTube. YouTube is like my primary go-to place. Um, and then, of course, the Apple Podcast, which I just got set up from yesterday uh, through Anchor. We're going to be on a whole bunch of these other streaming sites, which is going to be really cool. I put stuff on Twitter constantly. Okay, it's under the Dr. Jimbo Love Show. Now remember, our formal name is Dr. Jimbo Love Show featuring... Seth Matthew. That's right. So don't forget, but, but for practical purpose on the internet, just type in Dr. Jimbo Love. You probably will get halfway through Love and it's going to pop up. Hashtag, okay? Look for hashtag Dr. Jimbo Love. You can find us. Look at some of our past shows, honestly. Uh, LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn a lot. We get a lot of hits on LinkedIn. So those of you that are bored during the day and you know your boss comes by or whatever and you're on your computer, hey, just hurry up, scroll up, you're on LinkedIn, right? You know, you're just looking for other things and maybe a new job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well come on back, we'll be right here.